So how much does a backward swoosh cost? Well, the answer of that can to some degree be found in today's pair of sneakers, so let's talk about it. Here is the box. Uh, it comes with this plastic sleeve over it. Just joking, this, this sleeve doesn't come with it. So here is the actual box. This is what it looks like. Um, it's all over white this time with a red Nike branding pretty much all over it in all of the corners. So a slight flip on the regular Jordan 1 box, which I think is pretty cool. But other than that, it is exactly what you would expect with a Jordan 1. So let's pop them open. Let's discuss today's pair of sneakers. And that is the Jordan 1 Heritage. quickly mention that you do get some extra laces in the box this black pair a red pair and then what I chose to lace up on this one is the white pair that you get included in the box so here it is the Jordan 1 heritage inspired by the iconic Jordan 1 Chicago and the hype carried by the Travis Scott fragment collaboration so why is this sneaker sitting under retail on the aftermarket I'm not kidding take a look at the Nike sneakers app these are the sizes that are available literally on the sneakers website. You hardly ever see that for any sneaker, let alone a Jordan 1. Is this yet again another indicator that the Jordan 1 hype is dying down or is this just a colorway that people don't like? And again, how much does the backward swoosh cost? Because if you throw that on here, replace the red color for blue, you get a sneaker that's worth $3,000. Now obviously I'm exaggerating here, but you, you get my point. So these drop today, April the 9th here in the UK. However, they're only gonna get a US release on May the 25th. They retail at the usual 155 pounds here in the UK and $170 out in the US. Now listen, I fully understand that you can't directly compare this pair of sneakers to the Travis Scott's because obviously those those were a lot more limited and they also had you know one of the biggest hype creators in the entire planet behind them but I do have to say it is pretty surprising to see how much people are just not that interested in this pair of sneakers I mean the colorway is pretty solid again like I said according to Nike inspired by the original Chicago colorway now obviously the color blocking is quite different the red is really nice deep Chicago colors the white is also pretty nice I mean a great canvas for maybe somebody who wanted to paint paint over it to create a Chicago colorway. I don't know. I mean, if you really didn't like this color blocking at all, it seems like it's gonna be a relatively cheap pair of sneakers that you may just wanna customize. I gotta say, even the materials on this pair of sneakers is really good by Jordan 1 standards. I mean, you're getting a really nice soft and thick tumbled leather for all of the red portions on here, especially around this sock liner. You can see the black as well is all tumbled leather. It has a really nice thick feel in hand. You'll definitely be able to tell a difference between the materials on here. Like the red and black is tumbled and it is pretty soft. However, the white is a slightly different leather quality, I guess. It's not tumbled and you can definitely feel it's a little bit stiffer. Still pretty thick and I still think if you found this on a pair of regular Jordan 1s you'd be relatively happy with it and there's plenty of other Jordan 1s with much worse leather quality. Now I do think if they made the Nike swoosh black I think that would have got people a little bit more excited even I don't think that the red Nike swoosh looks that great like if it was black I just feel like it would look better. I guess we're nitpicking here but I guess that's my opinion. It's 
definitely not a deal breaker and I think for the most part the color blocking of this Jordan 1 has to be a factor in how much people like these. I mean we even heard with the Travis Scott highs themselves that people weren't really feeling it. In fact a lot of people had the opinion that the lows were better and I think it is largely because of the color blocking. So obviously when you chuck that color blocking on a pair of GR Jordans they are going to sit or at least that's what we're finding with this pair of shoes. Because as far as the Jordan 1 goes these are not bad at all. White, red, black it all goes together pretty well. Now I will say that the rumors of an upcoming Jordan 1 Chicago reimagined colorway that's supposed to be dropping this year may have some people just kind of holding off from this pair of sneakers and just waiting to see what that one will look like. Again, the rumors are that that is supposed to be very, very similar to the original Chicago Jordan 1, maybe with an 85 cut or some kind of vintage effect applied to that pair of sneakers. But again, all we can hope for is that it's as close to the original as possible. Till then, you have to settle for this pair of sneakers or don't, just let them sit on shelf. Uh, let's talk about the sizing. In terms of sizing, I personally go true to size with Jordan 1, so that's what I'm gonna recommend to you guys. I honestly don't mind this colorway. I don't mind this sneaker. I quite like the leather on it, and I think it's a pretty solid pair of Jordan 1s for the summertime, but obviously I understand if this is not a sneaker that you're feeling. Maybe you've got enough Jordan 1s, and maybe you're looking towards other sneaker models. Let me know down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this pair of sneakers, and just join the discussion of the Jordan 1 hype at the moment, and what do you think happened to this pair of Jordan 1s that is currently sitting on the Nike sneakers app? But that's pretty much been it, guys. Thank you so much for coming through, hanging out for yet again another video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one, but until then.